Hey, welcome to my channel. I appreciate you stopping in. Today I figured I'd go and uh, do the first thing that I was going to do on my Kawasaki Ninja 1000, which was to get a helmet lock. Um, it's one of those things that I never really used to worry about. If you've seen my past video on the helmets that I used to own, I wasn't really concerned about a $40 helmet, to be honest with you. But you start getting a helmet that's five, six, seven hundred dollars, uh, or especially um, when I got my Icon helmet. I mean, that thing is a work of art. Um, people that aren't even into motorcycles would look at that and think, "Wow, that's pretty cool." So I really kind of got involved in it. What I've always hated about motorcycle locks is they kind of look like warts on the side of motorcycles. I mean, you see them on the, on the crash bars and they're just this big blob of, you know, lock that's sitting there bolted to it. Um, I never really liked that. Luckily, there have been some companies who have come along and made specific locks for certain bikes and I'm very very happy that I was able to get one for mine so I'm going to show you how to install it but not only that um, Pink Ponytails has one on her bike as well and I'm going to go over and show it to you on hers before I get started on mine just to kind of show you what the finished product looks like and how they mounting places are different on different motorcycles so we'll go over to hers right quick and underneath her heat shield, you'll see that there is her lock. So very easy to bolt on, two mounting spots, very secure, um, easy to get to. It's on the side that doesn't have the exhaust, so you don't have to worry about the heat of the motor getting to your helmet. Very well thought out, very well planned. So that's on her Indian Scout, the big one, not the 60. She likes horsepower. Um, and of course, this is my Ninja 1000. Um, this particular model is a 2012. Yours might be slightly different. The package we got off Amazon came like this. It has, of course, the keys. We have some spacers and washers for different applications. The lock itself with its mounting bracket, which is very nicely secured onto the bracket. And then the instructions. Now the one thing that uh, that was kind of impressive is the instructions aren't really that bad. Um, they're pretty decent, all things considering. Of course, we're not rebuilding the motor either, so that helps. The only thing you're going to need to do this is a set of Allen wrenches and a 14 millimeter box end wrench. It says to remove the bolt for the muffler, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to loosen it up and make sure that there's plenty of play. There are rubber bushings in here and all this other stuff. I want to make sure that that stays as together as possible. Also, because we're going to be removing these two mounting points, this is going to give us plenty of room. Now you'll notice I do have a USB charger here. Um, this is my uh, battery tender and it plugs straight into it. It's very, very roughly done. It's not something that's very refined, but it works well. Pop it open, you plug in your USB, and I as an individual, I like to run it around the back and then I'll flip this up, run it up into the back behind the seat, between the seats, and then up into the tail bag so that it takes up all the room that it needs and it's not dangling, it's not flapping in the wind. And again, it's not something that's beautiful going down the road, but it gets me what I need when I need to charge something down on the road. <clears throat> so we'll take our number five, 
and the number six. The number six millimeter is needed for that for your muffler bolt. And your number five is needed for up here. Now another thing I'd like to make note of, because it's very, very important doing jobs like this, I have my OSHA certified manager over there. He's, as you can see, watching intently on what's going on here. Um, always make sure you have a spotter. Uh, Four-legged furry ones are better. This particular model has spacers that are behind this mount and between the body and this mount. And they are not necessary when reinstalling this. So, just remove these. There's that spacer right there. I guess technically you could reinstall them, um, but I don't see a reason for them, to be honest with you. So we'll just, in the sake of keeping things as simple as possible, we'll remove them. <clears throat> now this is a 2012 Ninja 1000. Um, I did not see any reason to have to put any shims or spacers in it, behind it, to make it sit correctly. So, uh, makes things very easy for us here today. Drop that spacer out. Put that there. Bolts out of the way. And here, as you see, because I loosen this, there's plenty of movement. The only thing holding it is my plug. So, you take the lock and just make sure everything's obviously for your bike. It's going to fit right like that. Nice and easy. It does line up. So, again, no shims required, no shims needed. <clears throat> However, working on American air-cooled motorcycles as long as I have, red Loctite is a must on anything. If you're going to put anything on, it's always better to have at least some sort of thread locker on there. Um, I'm using red because I don't suspect that I'll be taking this off anytime soon. Um, so I'll put the red on there. That all threaded up. And ready to be put back on. And it's not fun if you don't get thread lock all over yourself, right? But that's why socks and jeans were invented, isn't it? <laughs> Saves you a lot on shop towels. So now we have this mocked up. We have the thread lock done. So I'll get this lined up on this and get it started. And then we'll take the second bolt. And again, this, this really isn't brain surgery. Um, very easy to do. And it's something quick and easy that will probably, I mean, you know, you think this lock probably costs like 30 bucks. It can save me a $700 helmet. Now, the one thing, of course, to remember is that these locks are not fallible. Um, they keep honest people honest, but you can overcome them. It's just something that you have that gives you a little peace of mind that when you go inside to go eat a meal, you come back out and your showy, your bell, or your icon helmet will still be here when you come back. But I also recommend, even if you do not have a high-end helmet, this is just such an easy thing to do that it's almost a no-brainer. Why, why wouldn't you? So, a 
we have those getting tightened up. And I'm not going Gorilla tight. It's not something you have to do Gorilla tight. Uh, maybe maybe tight quarter turn maybe. Um, again, that thread lock is going to hold everything real nice and solid. As you see, there's no movement right now at all out of that. And not any more than, than normal for that. So then we will retighten this because we did loosen this. We do not want this falling out. This has rubber mount, so it's going to hold a little bit easier too, even if you do not put red thread lock on it. And again, nice and tight, but don't go gorilla crazy on it. And there you go. You have the installation. Easy to get to, easy to use. And when you hang your helmet, even though it's hanging over the exhaust on this particular application, it's going to be held out of the way by the foot rest so that it's going to sit right there. You lock it up and you can rest assured that when you come back your helmet should definitely be there. I thank you very much for stopping in and enjoy, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, this was a 2012 Ninja 1000. There are different applications. Um, check out. You can do the regular, just the regular um, helmet lock or you can do these little brackets that allow you to have this kind of really cool setup to where it's out of the way kind of blends in with the rest of the bike so it's not just sitting out there in the wind thanks a ton i'll talk at you guys later